Hey guys, this is Richard Crowder and this community lightning talk is for the HDM Challenge event 2015. After reading on intelligence back in May 2014, I've been doing a deep dive into the neuroscience and reading a variety of different books and over 200 research papers mainly relating to how our brains and other animals analyze audio. This slide shows the processing hierarchies that occur within mammals. The blue highlighted box are actually the aspects of the cortex, so the, the higher level processing that occurs in this case with speech processing and we're going to concentrate on the lower box which is the the brown highlighted ovals um, and this occurs in 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 our cells in the brainstem and the periphery and includes uh, processing for things like horizontal sound location segmentation of 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 what we're listening to uh, and various waveform and spectral analysis and it may be difficult to see on the the right hand side and the left hand side there but the processing speeds at this stage occur from 10 microseconds up to as much as 500 milliseconds which is half a second and if you're looking at the neuron side uh, you get in from 100 to 800 spikes per second so this is processing early processing that occurs before any other high level cortical processing comes into play so this is just analyzing the audio and not analyzing the actual any form of language or any form of sounds in there so what happens when we when we listen to the world around us well, as you can see in this diagram somebody's speaking and somebody's listening and a microphone does a similar job to what our eardrums are doing within our ears and, and for a microphone you may be familiar with seeing the signal, in this case it's a, a voltage over time signal. And the signal can get very uh, clouded with all sorts of different noise. So you can get background noise, cars driving past, other people talking in the background. Um, you can um, see that it's there are some repetitive patterns in there but it can be a lot noisier than this. It's also a continuous signal, so it's in the time domain and it's a continuous signal that needs processing. If you have a look inside the human ear, and this is similar to other ears in other mammals and animals, you have the ear canal where the motion of the air comes in and reaches next to the to the to the box on there. You, on the left of that box you've got a, a, a grey disc and there's mechanisms behind that that transfer the motion of that eardrum uh, similar to how a microphone works it, it conveys the motion of that into what we see on the right hand side on the right hand side is, is two mechanisms in play here on the top left the three loops you can see are relating to balance and filled with fluids and, and and try and work out orientation and motion of the ear and your head and consequently your head. But then on the bottom right you see the spiral and it's actually a double spiral. So when the eardrum moves the mechanisms come into that grey disc and within that that spiral that spirals into itself and back out again there's a fluid that the motion sets up inside that fluid as a standing wave that travels through that spiral and inside that spiral there's very small hairs that are clumped together that move with the motion of the standing wave that travels through If we take the spiral and stretch it out into, in this case on the left hand side you've got a semicircle. 
you find that there's three rows of outer hair cells, the OHC, and one row of inner hair cells. And they act similar to like the hairs on the head when, when there's, there's motion in the wind, when the fluid goes across them they move and there's a, there's a, a mechanism that changes that into the impulse you see on the on the nerve fibers and you can see in the middle of that left diagram from one of the inner hair cells you've got loads of type 1 nerve fibers coming off it so that's the feed forward sensory information coming from the inner hair cells and then just next to that labeled 2 you've got one solitary uh, nerve fiber which is feedback information the other uh, neurons on there and, and, and different uh, axons are, are trying to show the, the feedback and some of the feed forward. But as you can see, the, the important thing with the left hand diagram is you can see from each inner hair cell there's, there's a lot of information that comes off the individual hair cells. And the way these are laid out, you've got a basal and an apical side to it along the, the spiral or in this case with it flattened out the, the hemicircle one side looks at high frequency and then it goes down to low frequency sounds on the right hand side it shows the feed forward and feedback pathways and there's lots of them this is very early on this is this is very early on and it shows the the cochlea feeding into spiral ganglion and the type 1 nerve fibers coming off the inner hair cells, that single row of inner hair cells uh, in the human and, and cats etc. There's about 30,000 nerve fibers that arrive into the cochlear nucleus and as you can see early on the cochlear nucleus it bifurcates into the VCN, the ventral cochlear nucleus and then an, into the dorsal side and, and goes further on into the superior, superior olive or the spiri olive and then feeds back to outer hair cells and also can synapse onto the uh, type 1 nerve fibers but one thing it shows in, in the right hand figure is some of the early uh, bifurcation and, 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 and break up to create different pathways uh, a lot of it is just feed forward information of sensory in sensory data, sensory information, and then uh, you do have some feedback, early feedback. And one of the things that that can do, for example, the ventral, it's labeled there VCN, but the ventral cochlear nucleus is involved with horizontal sound locations. It's trying to work out where sounds are coming from. If you tie in the left and right ears, um, into this you can uh, humans have quite an accurate way of determining where sound comes from inside the, the cochlear nucleus when the inner hair cells send the uh, 30,000 fibers um, there's a variety of responses and there's a variety of cells, there's about seven different cell types in the cochlear nucleus and they're octopus, pyramidal um, globular bushy cells is, is a, a variety that do different processing of that feed forward sensory information from the inner hair cells responding to that respond to groups of frequencies from what we're, we're listening to um, but the spike timing gets quite complicated and for a simple sound you can see there uh, the various action potentials that can that the neurons can can show as responses. Now this is quite a complicated diagram but if we start from the top you can see the two hemispheres of the auditory cortex, the curly bit on, on within mammals brains uh, and that feeds down into the middle of the diagram where you've got the thalamus and then down into the midbrain, the inferior colliculus, and through the lateral lemniscus, and down into that that lower, smaller box, which is the cochlear nuclei, and that is is highlighted and, and zoomed in to get that bigger 
box at the bottom and, and unfold it so you can see the complexity from that previous diagram you can see the complexity of the cochlear nuclear and uh, you might be able to see the ventral cochlear nuclear highlighted and the dorsal cochlear nuclear and then right down in the bottom left of that big box you can see the the spiral cochlea and uh, you've just got one line coming off that but that's the 30,000 or so nerve fibers going into the cochlea nuclear all the other lines on there the dash lines and solid lines are feed forward and feed back pathways you can see the the complexity of the different pathways and all the way through up to the cortex a lot of, of different processing occurs to reduce the dimensionality of the information, dimensionality of the data that change the representation to try and pick out features that are important and to drop out anything that isn't that important. I'll, I'll jump back from the neuroscience. You can see how complicated it can be, but a lot of work's been done over the last uh, quite a few decades now to understand that and it's advancing rapidly. Um, but one of the things that happens early on, if we go back to the spiral cochlea and, and how the inner hair cells work, what it's trying to do is on the left hand side you've got the signal coming in so that the changing on the eardrum or if we use a microphone on a computer you can see the signal coming in to make it a bit more manageable to, to analyze. You can apply a window function to that signal which you can see uh, on the left hand side there you've got two window functions across the signal and they look like sine curves or Gaussians um, and then on the right hand side at the top of the right hand diagram you can see the overlap of those windows and the filtering that they can do the actual filter function, the window filter function is very important because you can get um, it, can, it can dampen down features you might be looking for, it can also lead to spectral leakage, there's a variety of things that can occur, so you've got to be careful with uh, the window function. The actual uh, cochlea, the spiral cochlea, has a linear and nonlinear response and, and uses um, similar filters like gamma chirp, uh, gamma tone, there's certain filters, window filters that can be used uh, but on the right hand side you can see how we can how the signal can be broken down so a continuous time signal or a signal in the continuous time domain the window functions can break it down into smaller sections smaller chunks and then or frames window segments is right terminology and then you can apply things like Fourier analysis or so Fourier transforms or wavelet transforms to change its representation from the time domain into a complex frequency domain. And then in the frequency domain, just as the cochlea, the spiral cochlea is doing with the inner hair cells, you can represent it, you can have this new representation, a frequency representation. And that's what you can see on the, the very right of the right hand diagram, you can see the three STFT short time frequency time, frequency representations in this case although it's a complex domain it's only showing the real side the magnitude is ignoring the imaginary side which is typically the phase response once you got into the frequency domain as you can see on the top of this graph it looks a lot different the representation has changed completely the bottom shows the continuous time signal of of somebody saying something of speech and you can't really you, you can see where things may start and stop so there's there's features you can pick out of that uh, out of that continuous time signal when you get into the frequency domain there's more features we can start seeing with our own brains so if you look at the transition from she had her dark suit if you look at some of the higher frequencies around the first letters A and D, you can start seeing motion and movement in those higher frequencies and start picking out intonation in and, and motion of those letters. So once you have 
the original signal in a new representation in this case in the frequency domain you can start applying things like Hilbert transforms and various other processing in this case the the solid black line across that uh, the frequency representation is a, a linear predictive coding uh, and that analysis has created that line. It's difficult to see, this kind of needs a 3D graph so that you see how this changes over time because this is a snapshot in time of somebody saying a particular vowel, I think it's E in this case um, and, and how the vowel is, is with extra noise or if you add other speakers or the vowel plus other, pe other, speak other people speaking around so you can see that it, it can be very different but one thing this this doesn't really show if you watch this over time you can see how th there's more features you can see from this and analyze from this you can start looking at just that that black line that 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 single continuous line you can you can look at that and you can look at how that changes over time and look at the slope of the curve and how that slope is changing so you can look at the derivatives of of that curve and track that as features you've taken your your crazy time domain signal that you can't really see anything in apart from where sound is starting and stopping you've changed it into a different representation in, in the frequency domain and then applied various uh, analysis and you can you can break that down further and you can start then tracking those features So once you've got a, a simpler representation, as you can see in the bottom graph, that simpler representation can then be encoded into a, a sparsely distributed representation. And over time, as it changes, it can then be fed into the higher echo temper memories. And one thing that occurs and is known to occur, you can uh, it's based on receptive field, etc. But one thing is that the mini columns that we see in the neocortex do have an actual mapping to the uh, to the way the inner hair cells were laid out so you, so you get a, a mapping of the frequency bands and by changing the representation and picking out certain features that you require from the frequency domain to get as it shows here the, 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 the line on the bottom graph that can then be encoded into a sparse dispute representation and fed into a temporal memory and then on to hierarchies of temporal memory to, to pick out further features and do further uh, feature analysis and processing on, on this continuous signal that's coming in. So returning to the first slide, what I've tried to, to show and highlight is, is the early processing that occurs within most animals and, and, and certainly primates and, and humans when trying to understand the world around us, trying to hear the world around us. Uh, and as you can see a lot more goes on once you get uh, your sparsely distributed representation and pulled out the important features from the crazy time, continuous time domain signal that's coming in and, and either a microphone or into uh, our ears and, and, and beating on the eardrums how the inner hair cells play their part on on breaking that into groups of frequencies and changing the representation from continuous time into a, a complex and continuous complex representation and then how additional processing can then occur to pull out important features and and feed that into the neocortex and then the whole brain is recruited and a lot of feedback and feed forward paths come into play as well as aspects of the old brain such as the limbic system to try and understand uh, feeling and emotion uh, you can also have your internal speech playing back things uh, there's, there's a whole host of, of various things that occur um, all this occurs over time, so, so some of the processing, for example, semantic understanding takes over half a millisecond uh, and there's a variety of different scales on, on the neural aspects, the neural spiking aspects of that. 
uh, and gamma can be, you know, over a quarter of a second, over 200 milliseconds, or 250 milliseconds in this diagram. Um, and there's a whole host of other processing that can occur. And it's looking for things like grammar features, phonetic features, uh, syllable, semantic, uh, and also things like uh, attention mechanisms to try and concentrate on aspects of, of, of what we're listening to or trying to understand, and the recruitment of other uh, senses. So trying to work out where to look and where to cicade with our eyes, and internally we're, we're doing a uh, lip reading to try and match what we're hearing. So if it's a noisy environment, we might have better success with our uh, with our brains to, to subconsciously lip read. Um, and there are many feed forward and feedback paths that occur throughout the hierarchy of temple memories and also in 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 the processing before that. So I think that's it for the moment and, and I guess we'll open this up for questions. Thanks for listening.